Uh, welcome everybody to it is the 10th cafe talk uh, rubismo cafe talk uh, inspirational talk uh, in the framework of the rubismo project so really quickly on the rubismo uh, project we we work with rural areas and business models innovative business models in the food value chain the bio-based value chain and ecosystem services uh, and we are looking at, at different aspects. So entrepreneurship is, is a big part, but we're also looking at uh, sporting actors and, and the ecosystem around them and developing some uh, training and capacity building uh, material. So today we are at the second cafe talk of the third circle, uh, lo looking at new business, uh, how to include sustainability in your business model. Uh, so Apolline will we, we'll talk about the triple bottom line and a way to, to include the environmental and social uh, aspects to, you, to your business model. We will uh, have another uh, presentation next Tuesday by Julie, and then we will uh, all travel to, to Italy to study the, the Caviro um, business case and their, their business model. So as I said, all the presentation will be available uh, on the website, on our YouTube channel. So if you would like to reuse it in, in the future or just have a look later, uh, it will be possible. Yes, so with no more introduction, Apolline from Greenflex, the floor is yours. Hello everyone. Um, so we're going to talk today about the uh, triple bottom line and how it can be a solution to valorize your environmental and social initiatives. Uh, so I'm not sure uh, if everyone knows Triple Bottom Line, so I think it would be interesting to just introduce uh, the context of when it was created and why. Uh, and I will talk a bit about uh, the applications, the first applications of Triple Bottom Line accounting, and I will talk about their limits. And so it will lead me to monetization, which is a new application of Triple Bottom Line accounting today. And then I will discuss about the benefits and challenges are for implementing a triple button line in your company. Uh, so I just have 15 to 20 minutes. So of course, I won't be able to go into the details of what is triple button line because it's a wide concept. So do not hesitate if you have uh, any questions to ask them in the chat and I will be happy to try to answer them afterwards. Uh, so first for the introduction, I think uh, every one of you knows, but it's still interesting and important to, to, uh, uh, to talk about this and to talk about the fact that our businesses have externalities and most of the time these externalities have negative... Oh, impact. yeah, oh, déjà talk then, Ada. Can you mute your mic, please? <laughs> uh, these externalities have a negative impacts of, uh, on our environment. So we have this for every, every aspect of our environment, for, but for example, for soil erosion, uh, there is a study uh, that was uh, conducted in 2018 in Europe by the European Commission that showed that our agricultural, agricultural practices uh, are responsible for a lot of erosion and actually it's responsible for almost 7% of the erosion of our agricultural land in Europe. And what we know more recently is that uh, all of our businesses are uh, relied on, um, on uh, ecosystem services. And so um, the erosion of our environment will have a negative impact also on our businesses. So for example, this study uh, uh, conducted by the European Commission showed that the uh, erosion of the soil was responsible in about 1.25 uh, billion euros of lost, loss of crop productivity uh, for the farmers in Europe. So that's a lot of money. And actually, as I said, it, it's a thing that uh, we can see for every degradation of the environment and we, every aspect. So for example, uh, for the global warming also. Um, so I think it was interesting to show you this report because uh, it is the first report that was written by an economist and not about uh, by a 
politician or a climatologist. So it was written uh, 15, uh, 15 years ago by Nicola Stern, who works at the World Bank and also at the British Treasury. And it changed a lot um, um, in the minds of politicians and uh, decision makers because he talked about uh, climate change on with money, actually. Like he said, um, the estimated cost of inaction against climate change would cost between five to 20% of the global uh, GDP. So this is very large, but it depends on the methodology he used, uh, versus 1% of the cost of actions. So now we know that actually his methodology was quite controversial and maybe the cost of action, well, the cost of action against climate change is way more than just 1%. But it was a very interesting uh, report because uh, for the first time he talked uh, uh, about uh, environmental externalities by saying, okay, it will have an impact on your businesses and also by saying, um, by comparing them with the same unit, which is money. So for the, for the business leaders, uh, it was way more easy, way easier to understand the priorities they have to take in order to uh, be able to be sustainable as a business. Uh, but the problem is that at the time, businesses did not have uh, many tools to be able to measure their impacts, to be able to measure their um, a dependence on ecosystem services and to be able to have tools uh, to uh, compare easily different uh, scenarios uh, for their business uh, sustainability. So this was uh, an introduction uh, for triple bottom line accounting. Um, first, I need to uh, come 25 years back when this phrase was coined. So it was coined by uh, John Elkinson, who is, who still is a consultant in sustainability. And he coined this phrase uh, because uh, for, for him, it was a way to measure the business performance, not only on the uh, profit bottom line. So we are uh, used to, uh, to, to assess a business performance today only on financial dimensions. So what he wanted to say is to measure it, but also on the people and the planet capital. So the people, it will be like, for example, your workforce, your employees, and the planet, it can be the resources you depend on. And what he wanted to, to do and to make possible with this triple bottom line aspects was to go towards a sustainable form of capitalism. So what he said it was, it was really change the way that uh, companies would uh, manage their businesses because they will not only um, be focused on profit, but also on planet and people sustainability. And also it would lead to uh, competition uh, between companies, not only on the profit bottom line, but also on the people and the planet bottom line. So has it worked uh, a bit? Because uh, since uh, the creation of uh, Triple Bottom Line, uh, it has, there has been a lot of new applications uh, about uh, integration of environmental and social issues in different sectors. So for example, in regulation um, today, every company, every big company in Europe has to make public its information regarding uh, actions in social and environmental areas. Uh, it's called CSR reporting. And even in the world where it's not, in some, some countries in the world, it's not mandatory, most of top companies do this. Uh, so it's not only the financial re report, it's also the CSR report. <clears throat> Also in, in the investing sector, today most of investors um, use the ESG criteria, which is a set of criteria on environment, uh, society, uh, social impact, and government's uh, strategy. And if uh, the company uh, does respect these criteria at a certain level, the investor will invest and put money in the company. And also in the construction sectors. 
um, we have a lot of uh, labels today on products, but also on companies. So for example, you can know, uh, you maybe know the B Corporation uh, label, the, the certification. Uh, there are a lot of companies today that are certified B Corp. And basically, if uh, they are certified, if they respect different criteria on social, environmental, government, uh, community impact. But the problem is that we know that it's not sufficient enough like uh, to really drive the change that Elkington wanted. Uh, we are not here today. Uh, so for example, Ben & Jerry's, uh, it's the first, one of the first uh, B Corporation uh, cert certified, but uh, last year it still has, still had a lot of uh, um, controversies about uh, greenwashing, especially on its uh, agricultural practices. Um, also, the Financial Times. So, Financial Times is uh, is supposed to to support uh, uh, investors, and even Financial Times says that ESG criteria sometimes are really um, lead to greenwashing because actually investors measure the ESG criteria, but they still invest in companies that have bad level of ESG criteria. So, that's a, that's an issue. And also Amazon, so you all know uh, the, the bad impacts Amazon can have on uh, communities, on, on social and environmental aspects, but it still uh, has a CSR report and you can see in their, in their um, website, uh, their CSR reports. So we, it's not sufficient. Why? Um, first, because even if companies uh, track indicators, most of the time, these indicators are not related to the context, which means that, for example, uh, you can be a company and say, OK, I will uh, reduce my greenhouse gas emission by 20%. Uh, OK, it's great. But um, most of the time, these companies will not uh, be aligned with the Paris Agreement. So this, um, this objective is not calculated with the with the objectives we, we have to do in order to be able to mitigate the climate change below 1.5 degrees. Uh, also, um, it can be complicated, you know, I think most of you know, it's complicated to measure impacts on society and on environment. It's not the same as measuring impacts on profit and uh, on money. Uh, so most of the time it can be difficult for business managers to first measure it and also to understand um, the, the units. So a ton equivalent CO2 is not as easy to understand as a euro or a dollar. So also it's complicated for them to set priorities. And that's what I said in introduction. And also we don't have common indicators between the three bottom lines. So it can be also complicated to to, to take actions and to, to know what to do and what priorities to take. So that leads us to monetization, which is um, a way of not only calculated your, calculating your impacts, but also uh, be able to value the impacts in euros or in dollars. Um, so there are different uh, initiatives about this. Um, one of the most famous one is uh, the Caring Environmental Profit and Loss Initiative. Uh, a lot of companies uh, use this relatively, uh, for example, Philips. So I will just show you, um, yes, I will just show you a very short video to explain it to you. Uh, that's why I'm happy I can help steer Philips' environmental efforts by providing concrete numbers. To come to these numbers, we use life cycle assessment. It's a methodology to calculate the environmental impact of products over the full product life cycle from cradle to grave. And to give an example, one of the environmental impacts that we calculate is smog, which affects people's health all over the world. It is quite abstract, so how do we translate that into euros? For that we use valuation techniques like willingness to pay. For example, we know there is a relation between life expectancy and air pollution, and from health economics we know how much people value a year of their life. I think it's quite courageous that Philips went public with these uh, numbers, because putting a euro number on abstract environmental impacts makes it much more tangible. In that sense, money talks. 
And since there has been more attention to this also internally, I received more requests from the businesses to help them measure their environmental impact. Uh, for example, of their packaging innovation or recycling initiatives. As a next step, I would find it very challenging to help put also a euro number on the positive impact that Philips has on people's lives, for example, through the healthcare solutions. And I just wonder how many billions uh, that number would be. So this was an example of, uh, of um, the caring initiative. Can you still see my, my screen? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so this has benefits because, as I said, uh, you will uh, use a well-known language, which is money, so it's way easier for managers to understand it. But also, it can have uh, abuses, so you really need to have a framework for this methodology uh, because um, companies can, uh, can value um, the, their impacts differently. And, for example, even methodologies such as what she said about um, uh, willingness to pay can has can have ethical concerns, so, so it's very important to um, to have a, a framework that every company can uh, can uh, follow. Um, and also, what I wanted to say is that you also have an ethical concern about putting price tags on uh, on environmental impact because it can lead also to buy off. So, which means that uh, a company knows that uh, it has uh, ten billion dollars negative impacts, and they will just pay ten billion dollars and say, "Okay, um, I, I am clean." So that's an issue also with this initiative. That's why uh, we have uh, another method. Um, which goes further and which is like the paroxysm, I would say, of triple bottom line accounting, because you will really integrate um, capital, profit, people and planets into your accounting uh, things. So which means uh, the income statements uh, and the balance sheets. So I won't explain how it works because it's very, it's complex, but basically uh, you will uh, consider when uh, the, the profit capital you have, the financial capital you have, you have the same with the profit, uh, the people capital and the planet capital. So we, you will uh, have the same thing uh, in, your, in your balance sheet, balance sheet and income statement on these different capitals. Um, and so when you, when you use these capitals, uh, you will uh, have expenses and you will need to uh, re, uh, reinvest in your capital in order to be sustainable and to be solvent. So this is a very interesting method because if you want to have a sustainable, uh, a sustainable business and a solvent business, you will really need to develop a true uh, and robust uh, strategy on environmental and social conservation. Um, so the issue with this is that uh, it's a model which is still uh, at the experimental stage. Uh, in France, it's a bit developed and some companies uh, use it, but uh, in other countries, uh, you, can, uh, you can research if you, if you want uh, the uh, environmental and social accounting, and you are still really at the stage of research. So yeah, which that means that companies, if they want to uh, do triple bottom line accounting, they will need to invest a lot of efforts, uh, either human, but also financials to be able to deliver something which is robust and sustainable. So yeah, in a nutshell, um, triple bottom line accounting uh, can be very interesting for companies because they can learn more about their impacts they can, um, it's a way to, uh, to uh, engage your managers because it's way easier to, uh, to understand money but, uh, and not to uh, turn equivalent CO2, for example. Um, and also it can help you stand up for competition and to justify higher selling prices because it will be written into your balance sheet and, uh, and income statements. Uh, and also it can be interesting uh, to uh, anticipate new regulations. So for example, 25 years ago, uh, CSR reports were not mandatory at all. Now it is. So maybe in 25 years, it will be a standard to have triple bottom line accounting in your accounting methods. 
But also, as I said, there are a lot of challenges triple bottleneck needs to overcome in order to be uh, democratized. So the first one is technical. Uh, we have not robust methodologies today. Uh, and it needs a lot of expertise for companies to implement this. Uh, also, there is a problem of economics because, of course, if it's uh, it's complicated to put in place, it costs also money. So most of the time, companies won't see the return of investment of it. And so, the main thing is a legal problem. Uh, if uh, if it was, uh, if there was a regulation about this, there would be frameworks that would be also uh, companies that would be uh, forced to do this. And so it would be way more easier to democratize this. Thank you very much.